I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG. And I'm going to answer a question that many people have asked. They say, Dave, what about your antenna? Tell us about your antenna. Well, we've been talking a lot about antennas recently. My antenna, my primary station antenna, is a vertical. It's a Butternut HF9V vertical, supposedly nine bands. It covers a very small portion of the 80 meter band, and the SWR doesn't get below 2 to 1 on the 17 meter band. But otherwise, it's, it's a very good antenna. It does great on 20 and 40. Uh, which are the two bands that I use the most. Uh, the antenna requires radials, so we'll take a look at the radials, the antenna itself, how I've got it connected, what I've done, how I keep the thing up in the air, and uh, a number of questions like that. So let's go on a field tour. Let's just uh, follow the coax here. It's the uh, RG213 on the ground. We live in an area where landscaping is not permitted by covenant. Everything is supposed to be natural. So <laughs> I figure I can just leave the coax on the ground. It's the easiest way to see if anything has been done to it. It will kind of disappear into the grass after a while if you just leave it there. But don't forget it is there because you don't want to actually drag it up. Now right here on this board, which is designed to keep this above the ground, I'll zoom in on it there, is the waterproofed connection between the RG213 and another different kind of cable, I'll have to look it up, that acts as a matching stub between here and the bottom of the antenna. Now the antenna sits right here. I have a sleeve around the bottom. As you can't quite see from this corner. But the sleeve is designed so that I can put the antenna down into the sleeve and pick it out again without having to bury it, unbury it. It's made of a piece of pipe just designed so that it would be enough for the other pipe to stick into it. So going up the antenna we have down at the bottom here a coil which is really spread out. I could actually take some turns off of it. But that connects the main antenna shaft here with ground through this inductance and this is what enables it to uh, be resonant on 80 meters. Now as we go up the antenna we encounter some coils and some of all things capacitors. This is how it actually gets the capacitance it needs and the coils are very large, made of very large stock aluminum uh, because the idea is that uh, they will pass all the current without any significant uh, resistance. The antenna is tuned by changing the length of the coils. Down here at the bottom, this is the 80 meter coil by moving that uh, connection down there with the wing nut around I can lengthen or shorten the coil. The capacitors are fixed by the way those capacitors are high voltage capacitors and they are expensive I had to replace one. And then uh, this coil right here off on the side the 30 meter coil taps into the 40 meter coil and the positioning of that tap is super ultra critical and all kinds of fun to get that in the right position. Now up here these things sticking out to the side are actually 
device is designed to provide a little capacitance. Uh, they're at right angles here. And then it goes on up. That one up there is the 12 meters. And then as we go up the coil, we see some stubs. It's quite tall. The way it's uh, held up in the wind is I put the uh, sleeve pipe, which is about three feet long, down in the hole and uh, then held the antenna in place with some rope, packed that dirt in around it, and then um, after a couple years let it, uh, took the guy ropes off. And then the thing promptly leaned a couple degrees. <laughs> you can't seem to avoid it. This uh, thing at the bottom here is from DX Engineering. It's a radial plate. Now see how this is connected here. We have a place over here on the side for the connection. You know that everything is uh, weatherproofed. The connection and the coax braid is attached to the uh, ground plate and then the interior goes up and attaches to the uh, antenna proper. Okay, so the um, antenna um, mast or shaft is insulated from the ground by that uh, big chunk of fiberglass right there. Now there is a DC ground to bleed off static charges through this coil, although of course that coil gives considerable reactants at uh, RF, uh, so there's a significant difference in RF potential between ground and, and this piece of the shaft. Now what I've done here is I've attached to this radial plate a gazillion radials. Uh, well, I guess it's actually a countable number. Um, there's room on here for more. It's interesting, they provided something like uh, 60 holes, but uh, not near that many uh, screw sets so, or bolt sets. So what I did is I did a lot of crimping here. Uh, to the radials to give them a good solid connection. The radials are, well, you can sort of see them on the ground over here and you can see that they're not exactly uh, stretched out straight. They all kind of go off into the into the distance under the trees. Basically where those trees are forms the limits of the radials. Okay, and the radials are on the ground, just lying on the ground, and I opted for insulated radials. Uh, the ends are attached to little chunks of wood or something like that to hold them in place. Kind of steer clear of the propane tank just a little bit. Uh, there are also, and you can barely see them at this point. Let me see if I can... Yeah, there we go. Okay, right there. These were the original radials. Twelve pieces of number eight bare wire that was buried. They were buried under here, and I thought, oh, that'd make a great radial field. They go on out, I think, 25 feet each, and I had a, a neighborhood kid come and uh, dig trenches for all of those. They're terrible radials. They really don't do any good. Uh, the, however, they're great now I've, that I've got a radial field on top of it. These make for a great grounding rod. So there's uh, 12 of them out there. The first set of radials that I put down, I tried soldering to this ring that you see here. See, that was the old original ring it actually shows up out here as an aside this is a solar panel that I use and uh, unfortunately it got hit down here by a rock uh, while doing some uh, weed eating which just shattered the glass everywhere not there but actually for the entire piece of glass on the panel 
uh, was shattered so I don't know how long this will last it's still producing but then again it's dry uh, and that the fact that the grass uh, glass is uh, cracked across the whole thing will keep the uh, uh, device from keeping the water out so we'll see how it happens see what happens now tracing the wire back over this way we don't have children in the tract to bother this the animals seem to leave it alone this comes over to where I have all the lightning um, arrest doors there are four down there and I have two more in the box in the shack that I'm going to add for a total of six down here because they seem to be accreting antennas and I want to be able to to use them all well I hope you like the field tour uh, have a chance to see what my antenna looks like uh, everybody ends up with an antenna that works for them uh, this one has worked well for me uh, the HF9V uh, Butternut Vertical is still for sale. They're rather pricey, as you can see from the catalog page here. Um, I would suggest these days you might also look at the uh, AV640 or something like that, which doesn't need radials. Mine definitely does. It has lots of them, and now that it has lots of them, it performs really well, and I'm pleased with it. I've been using it as the benchmark to measure uh, the performance against all the other antennas that uh, we've taken a look at over the past few weeks. So, there you have it. That is my antenna. Uh, please remember to uh, post a comment if you have a question. Also, please click like as it helps YouTube pick out videos to show to new hands. Also, please subscribe uh, to my channel. The number of subscribers is the metric YouTube uses to determine how much promotion to give a channel. And that helps with this one uh, as the numbers keep going up. And then what that does is draw more people into amateur radio. I've had a number of times people have said, you know, they, they saw my videos, got hooked. And, and went forward from there. Uh, please feel free to share these videos all over. You could also embed them in your website using the YouTube embed method. Uh, for those who are studying the amateur extra and would prefer a copy right there with them in their computer, I do have that online. You can uh, purchase that. Also, please remember the tip jar and Patreon and all of those other things. And above all, above all, use both feet when walking. Until next time, 73.